I want to bring in J.P. Shadrick, uh, senior reporter, host for the Jacksonville Jaguars, online, on Twitter, at J.P. Shadrick. Uh, J.P., how you doing? So, First of all, thanks so much for the time. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Really appreciate it, Ryan, uh, Braylon. Guys, it's good to be with you. Absolutely. You Obviously, well. this is a huge story all throughout uh, the sports world, uh, what's happened to Urban Meyer. How would you, just big picture, characterize his time as head coach uh, of the Jacksonville Jaguars up until the end? You know, maybe outgunned a little bit. You know, I think he was trying to figure out the NFL. He said he had studied it, and you can watch it all you want. You can ask questions of other people who've been around the league. But once you're actually in the fight every day and having to be in that locker room and work with players and assistant coaches from different backgrounds and an ownership, and there's just a lot of different dynamics in the NFL that he had never really seen before firsthand. And I think as the season went along, He was trying to just continue to figure that out, and obviously it wasn't going the right way at all. And I heard your list earlier of things in the offseason and and all that, but this really certainly, for me at least, escalated on that Thursday night football week four, and then he went to Columbus and didn't come back with the team after the game when the team's 0-4 and had just lost a tight football game and they're close. The quarterback was playing well at that point. Uh, they could come back and try to figure some things out. Well, he didn't come back with the team and then doubled down and said, you know, oh, hey, I was going back to visit some family. Some things happened. Okay. Well, 10 minutes after that press conference, the video comes out. So proving that uh, there were some other things that were going on there. So that was, I think, the first real big thing during the season. And then everybody was on notice from that point, including the owner, Shad Khan. And then all of a sudden, as the season went along, you start hearing those conversations of players and assistant coaches. They're having some issues. And then this past weekend, the reports come out on Saturday before the game with Tom Pelissero of NFL Media of Marvin Jones Jr., who is a 10-year pro in the NFL and has never really had an issue anywhere, one of the great guys in the league, had, had an issue here. And there were a couple other reports in that story. Then the Jags go out and get shut out in Tennessee. Worst performance of the year, 20 to nothing. And you could tell the crescendo rising in the days after this game. So for me, that's really where this thing turned the wrong way for Urban Meyer was that that decision after Thursday night football to not come home. Yeah, JP, you know, we're uh, in Detroit as analysts. We're analyzing another uh, franchise that doesn't seem to have it all together, and that being the Detroit Lions. But when we analyze them, we don't analyze Dan, you know, Dan Campbell, not coming back with the team and you know end up getting caught on snapchat or social media doing something he shouldn't be doing and then also we don't have former kickers coming out on dan Campbell talking about he kicked him and also made a comment that goes above the kick do you think what urban meyer has done down there and this is just me not being there although i have the shirt and although i have some he family. loves the jags jp he loves the jags well my my brother-in-law is marcus pollard so i have every reason to cheer <laughs> for wow. and marcus is my brother so hence why i get all the jaguars gear but do you think urban needs to be out down there do you think people are making too much of what's going on is it some something that we're not getting is there a disconnect or is everything people perceive in the media to be true no it seemed it seemed pretty close to true i mean just all the reports and everything and 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 it all just kind of piled up and to your point there about uh, the jaguars owner shot khan you know in the past year he has been very 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 patient with head coaches gus bradley got four years here on a rebuilt roster and then they finally had to let him go. Doug Marone was the interim for two games at the end of 2016 after Gus Bradley. He got four years. They went to an AFC Championship game one year, but they were not very good the rest of those years, and they had a very good roster. And, of course, Tom Coughlin was on top of all that. There was a lot of a lot of, a lot of cooks in the kitchen, if you will, in that time frame uh, with the Jaguars. But it, Doug Marone got four years. And then Marone gets scanned, and here comes Urban Meyer. And Shad Khan is one of the most patient owners in the NFL. He's proven that with the way he's gone about uh, the business. But it was so much to, that has happened off the field here, and you're still 2-11, and 11, and you're getting so much criticism. Well, in the past, you're 2-11, and 11, and nobody cares because you're the lowly Jaguars, as Shad Khan put it the other day. Well, no more. It's it's top of the fold. It's on CNN. It's on ESPN. It's on CNBC today. It's everywhere that you're two and eleven and you're you have off the field issues. So I think Mr. Khan had just had enough of that. The outside noise that goes with it. You know, let's just get back to football. And I think that's the the right step in the right direction. 
JP, Tom Azaway, thanks for coming on with us. We appreciate it. Uh, I want to talk to you about the hirings of Daryl Bevel and uh, Joe Cullen. Was that his demise? Because in reality, the guy wants to win. That's a, to a fault. He wants to win. So I've heard uh, from sources that he takes losing hard. He brings it in on a Monday and a Tuesday. He's still mad about Sunday. He's still yelling. He calls out some of his coaches. But in reality, he would have let them do their thing had they been doing it the right way. Did he hire the wrong coaches? Is that why he is not going to be sticking around? I will say this. On the defensive side of the ball, as the season has gone along, I think Joe Cullen has started to figure it out a little bit as a coordinator, calling the plays. Now, they're not a top 10 defense or anything of that nature, but they had some really issues early stopping the pass. They switched up some some things in the back end of the defense. And the number one thing for them is going to stop the run. And then all of a sudden, they're going to bring some pressure. That's what Joe Cullen's going to do. And as the season has gone along, that's actually been one of the bright spots for this team. They're playing good enough defense, for the most part, to keep an NFL team in a game. But the offense can't do anything right now. And they can't do anything at all. And since the bye week, they're scoring 9.1 points per game. That's in week seven was the bye week. They were shut out last week. They are having issues if they hand it off running the football, but they haven't really handed it off a lot to James Robinson. And then they don't have the personnel, at least consistently on the outside, to get open down the field for Trevor Lawrence. The offensive line had a bad pass blocking game last week, especially on the interior. So Trevor didn't have much time. So it's really kind of come down to that. So I, I'm not going to put it on the coordinator hires as much because Urban said it when he came in. Hey, I'm going to be hard on assistant coaches, not as hard on players. We're going to coach the players and get them right the, the right way. And uh, to a point, you still have to have really good football players. They just don't have enough of those, I think, on the offensive side to hang week to week in the NFL, no matter who's dialing it up. That's, the I think, for me, the deeper problem now with the Jaguars offense. And, JP, that's one of the things, too, in, in the problem with, you know, a college guy like Urban moving to the NFL, 24 out of every 25 games he played in college, he had more talent than the team he was playing. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, that is just something that you cannot replicate in the NFL. And when the quarterback, the number one overall pick, which for, the, for, for two years prior, everybody knew Trevor Lawrence was going to be the number one pick in the draft wherever he went. So you've got this... Uh, what many people believe is a you know generational talent in Trevor Lawrence, God's gift to quarterbacking, who is getting worse every day or every week. It it spelled doom from the start, seemingly. And that's the one, and that's where I think where it really came down to it. And Monday and Tuesday, when Trevor Lawrence spoke with the media after the game on Sunday, and then again on Wednesday, yesterday during the day, they asked him pretty much straight up, "Hey, with all this drama and everything going on here." Um, you know, can you guys move forward and get to where you want to be? And he just came out and said, no, the, the drama has to stop. We have to get back to playing football and not be on the headlines. And when the quarterback says that, oh, wait a minute. Okay, now he's the face of the franchise. He's the, the first overall pick. It's the first time the Jaguars have ever had the number one overall pick. They've been bad a lot, but they haven't been bad enough to get the number one pick. And they finally did. And they have a quarterback that they feel can be the franchise guy for a long time. When he starts to go in front of a microphone and say things like that, and then last week, the same thing. Hey, we need James Robinson on the field. I don't know why he's getting benched for 16 straight snaps. Uh, we need we had a conversation on the sideline. We need him on the, in the, on the field. I don't call the plays and everything, but that's, that's that kind of thing you're starting to hear more and more from Trevor Lawrence. Shad Khan knows that. He hears it, and he understands the importance of Trevor Lawrence to this franchise, to this city. And uh, the franchise is his, and it was not Urban Myers. It's certainly Trevor Lawrence's show, and it's a matter now of how they can salvage what's left of this season for him and then put the right pieces around him to make him get back on track. Because when he's on track, he's everything is advertised, and he's everything you want off the field, too. Anything you want in front of a microphone to represent your organization, Trevor Lawrence is that guy. Just hasn't had the success yet on the field. But if you if you circle him with people that are the right for him, he's going to be great. JP, do you think Urban Meyer will coach again? I don't think so. Um, you know, and I, it's funny you're you're talking about earlier before I came on. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? All that stuff. I, 
you know, I, I just don't have a feel of him going back in the coaching ranks, at, at, at least immediately, because of the aftermath of all this right now. Certainly not in the NFL. You know, maybe down the line when it gets, uh, you know, a couple years removed, some college gig maybe. But you got to remember, he's, you know, he's no, he, he's getting a little older now too. By that time, he'll be in his 60s. Does he really want to do this? He was really good on television, obviously. So do they want him back? Does he even want to do that again? I don't know. That's a great question because uh, now here's the thing about Urban, too. I hosted the Urban Meyer show every Tuesday afternoon on the Jaguars radio network, and he would come on and do 30 minutes with us. When the mic's on, fantastic. But he was so locked in and, and seemingly focused on the task at hand at football that we really didn't get to know him otherwise. Like it was just on the air and that was it. So that's the one regret I have because I think if you get in his circle and get to know him a little bit, then he can be a fascinating you know, person to talk to. But nobody could really kind of crack that egg here, at least in our department, in our world, the media department, the same thing, which is right or wrong. I don't know. That's just the way it was around here. So um, to answer your question, I don't, I don't think so. Why would he have to? Why would he? Why would he want to go through that headache of what he just went through again, uh, when he can go be an analyst or go sit on a boat somewhere? I don't think that's an issue. But I haven't talked to him a one-on-one -on -one personally to to ask him that. JP Shadrick, he is the senior reporter and host on the Jacksonville Jaguars radio network. We thank you so much for your time, JP, and your insight uh, on this firing. Urban Meyer out, Daryl Bevel in. So Daryl Bevel has had to replace yeah. Matt Patricia of the Lions last year, and now Urban Meyer this year. Uh, hell of a trek there for, for Daryl Bevel. JP, thanks so much. Yeah, he won his debut last year, remember, by the way. They rallied, so let's hope he can do that again. And, hey, thanks for the sweatshirt, Braylon. Good to talk to you. And get, hey, get the sweatshirts for all the rest of your guys, too. I am. I'm going to get some more from Marcus, man. There's some more support down there in Jacksonville, especially you got Urban out there, man. The guys that seem going to have more fun now, so I'll get some more of those. Hey, we're big Marvin Fish. Jones Jr. fans, yes, too. He, he's been a great guy here for a long, long time. Fish. We are, uh, too. Uh, all right, JP. Thanks, thanks JP. so much. Uh and that's really where I want to take this uh, conversation next. We can wrap up anything he, he yeah. had to say about it after the break. There, yeah. but, but there's some stuff he said I want to react to. Also, Paul Feinbaum also was asked, do you believe that Urban Meyer will ever coach again? And we'll have his answer for you. We'll have that all next. Germani and Edwards. What was Sports Network? The bottom line.